where we put up our ideas and watch them hang, and then we take them down again. One aspect of it is me producing material that other people can, can use in an open way. Another one is me using material that's already open in my teaching practice. In, in a closed environment, you're preventing people from accessing the information that you create, whether it be research outputs or whether it be teaching um, outputs. Course content, lectures, all that sort of material should be out there and available. It'd be nice to be able to just check a box and say, make this available to the world. We've got this wonderful opportunity in, with, with the internet and the online environment. For us, even if you're a really small researcher in a small university, if you're doing great stuff, to get it out to a very broad community and to build that credibility and to build that interest in your work. Most, most academics don't know, when you, when you publish a paper in a journal, you publish it in the journal and you don't, you don't think about it really, but <coughs> you don't necessarily think, well, you know, can you then go and take that paper that you published in the journal and just put it on a website? And in some cases the answer is yeah. They've only asked for first publication rights. You don't need to go ahead and, and you know and then like not give it to anybody else. I mean, how many times do people do Google searches these days and find papers instead of, you know, going through these closed, you know, you go to Emerald or one of those big indexes and they're they're hard to use and they they're closed. But if you, you Google stuff, um, you find all these free papers all over the place. And that that's the number of eyeballs that would hit your work then would be massively increased. For, for the individual academic, I think there's a lot of value to the open source, open approach to their work. And I think for most, certainly of my colleagues, the idea of just putting your stuff out there doesn't worry them at all. They don't feel that that matters at all. Um, so if you close things off, for the individual academic, it's actually less useful. Um, especially when a lot of the work that you're producing doesn't really have any commercial value. And for an academic, it's all about those networks. It's about creating those networks and maintaining those networks. That actually gives you that career structure. Um, same thing with teaching. It's, it's, you know, if you keep the teaching closed, then the students who are enrolled in your unit get value from that teaching. But you can be a fantastic teacher doing wonderful, innovative things with, with new, way, you know, new approaches, to all sorts of different things. And as students come into that, you're only going to ever get that 30 or 40 or 50 or 100 or 400 students who actually come along and enrol in that course. Whereas if you put those materials online, suddenly the whole world can see your materials. And if you're doing really great stuff, again, that adds to your credentials as a teacher. If you can build value around lecturers, if you can say, hey, this lecturer is really great in this particular field, and we all know about this lecturer because we've all seen his lectures online, um, then you've got people coming from interstate or even overseas to that lecture, to that lecturer, to be part of that environment. In this space, we speak of the colour white. Some of the research we're doing is, is pretty much open source. Um, we made, a, a Mitchell Whitelaw and I made a, um, a piece of software called the Flickr Commons Explorer, which allows people to look at, you know, um, photos that are on, on Flickr. The colour of all colours combined. The colour of all of our options. The colour of our connection. This, we just basically put the source code for that up freely on, on uh, Mitchell's website so that people could just go click on it, download it, open it up, see the source code, hack it, change it, reuse it. And all we really did is say, look, if you reuse it, make sure you credit us. Um, and that's for us, that's the value. Yeah, the value of that piece of software is building our own um, social capital and our, our own academic capital. That traverses space and time. In the modern university environment, the university is really about commercialisation. It's about commercialisation um, of, of students to a certain degree, of the education. You don't want to lose any money associated with your education and you don't want to lose any money associated with your research. And so the idea of actually providing your research in an online environment um, for free, openly to anybody who comes to grab it, um, is kind of runs contrary to this idea of being able to capture that information and make money from it, to monetize it. I don't think that there is a resistance. I don't think that there is an, an administrative resistance to the idea of open source. I, I think there used to be, but I think that's gone now. The problem too is that the people who want to drive open source, people like you and I, 
tend to be very invested in the technology. Mm. We're, we're, we're happy with these ideas. We can think about the way things might link together and so on. But for the average person teaching a unit, mm. it's just, I've got to teach this unit. That's the first thing I've got to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I've got to use this LMS as well. Yes. Um, what does that mean? How do I use that? Okay, my unit outline can go there and I can put some lecture notes up there for the students and I can have electronic submission. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, you know, it. The idea of anything beyond that is, is just, again, too much work. Too much extra work. You write your lectures, you put them up in Moodle, Moodle's closed. I have to do work to put it up in an open space. Now there's nothing stopping me taking those lectures and putting them up on a WordPress blog or on UC Space or, or something else, but it's more work for me to do that. Well, to, to date, most of my teaching has been um, <coughs> within the environment, the teaching environment that, that is set before me. Um, you know, being time poor, um, not really having time to go off and, and innovate too much means that you tend to f choose default mechanisms. So um, generally my research is my, my teaching work has been put up on, on whatever learning management system has been available um, from the university. What's interesting is that when WebCT was done away with and we moved over to Moodle um, and it was kind of mandated that every, every unit would have a Moodle site, which, you know, that was fine. I moved over to that and I basically stopped using UC Space because I needed to have a Moodle site anyway and I figured, well, rather than maintaining two websites for the one unit, I'll just maintain the one. In a lot of other, in a lot of other stuff we do, the default position is, is a closed um, position. And I, that, that's not by accident. I mean, the university doesn't, by default, make all, all Moodle sites open. It makes them, by default, all closed. And there, there, are, there, there, there are some good reasons for that. Um, if I run a lecture and I, and I want to put up um, um, video materials, for example, or even if I want to put video materials on, on a Moodle website, I can be pretty sure I'm working within the, the fair use terms of, of, the, of the copyright laws. Whereas if that then becomes open to everybody and I'm putting up copyright videos, then, I, then I'm in, in trouble. Then, then I'm, I'm running up against the copyright laws. The only solution for me then is either to get to go through co getting copyright permission, permission or paying for redistribution of that video, which is horrendously expensive, or not using that video. In some cases, you can find you know alternatives which work, but again, that's not the default position. That's hard to do. It takes a lot of work. You can imagine showing a scene from a movie that exactly illustrates what you want to do or trying to find a movie that somehow is open source either because of its age or some other, for some other reason. It, it becomes hard, hard, hard work even if it's even possible. Um, so the default position becomes the one you take because it's the only thing you have time to do. And that default position is almost always closed. The reason the Blender example works so well is because it's the default position in that particular course. It was, it's a crack. We don't have, we, we haven't gone out and invested in a lot of 3D software in, in our discipline. And so it was easier for me to say, let's just use Blender than try and make a case for us buying, you know, umpteen copies of 3D Studio Max. Um, so in this case, the default position was easier. We could, we, could, we could also probably um, spend a bit of time thinking about what are, the value, what, are, what are the benefits and values. In a corporate sense, thinking about, for the University of Canberra, what are the benefits of open sourcing material? What sort of material can't we open source? What sort of material could we open source? And what, what flow on benefits would there be from that? So if, for example, we decided that um, we would make all lectures that weren't otherwise um, you know, containing copyright material available free online, or if we said, you know, if we asked each discipline area um, in the university to nominate, you know, a bunch of material which you put online, and we created some sort of, um, you know, University Commons area, so University of Canberra Commons, where there was just a whole bunch of stuff from all over the university, which gives people examples of what we do here, that, that would be moving in that direction. Whenever you talk to people about open source, in, in an administrative environment, there's always a small amount of risk involved. There's a risk involved with 
breaching a copyright law or breaching a privacy law or something like that. These risks are reasonably small, but they're often exaggerated. Mm. And I think, I think you know, for what it's worth for me, I think um, it's worth taking those risks and just you know, they can be mitigated. You can look at them and think, no, that's not a smart idea. It could have this this concern. But you need someone inside the university who's thinking about these issues who can focus on those things rather than just leaving it up to individual academics to, to work it out for themselves. <laughs>